The St. Louis Cardinals are a proud franchise, 11 World Series titles, a great fan base, and at least as of late, they seem to be in contention every year. Since the turn of the century, they've had one losing season, and they made the playoffs the last four years. Mike Schilt got them there in each of his first three seasons, but he was still fired after 2021. In comes rookie manager Ali Marmol, and in 2022, they have their best season since 2015, 93 wins. The team seemed to be on the upswing. I thought they were a slam dunk to repeat as division champs, but in one of the most shocking turns I ever remember, this team didn't finish first, or second, or third, or even fourth. This was a last place team, the first time they found themselves in last place since 1990. Today, let's dig into the Cardinals' 2023 season and see exactly what went wrong. First, they had two losses at the end of 2022. Albert Pujols came back to the team after being gone for a decade, but at age 42, he turned back the clock. He had an elite second half, ending with 24 homers and 895 OPS. Nobody could have expected him to be an impact bat in the middle of that order. Everyone knew this was a one-year deal, and when the season was over, he was done. Then, there was Yadier Molina, the rock behind home plate for 19 seasons, but he only put in half a season and he was an offensive liability. Also, Jose Quintana was a good midseason pickup, but he left and went to the Mets. Let's move on to 2023, and they needed to replace the bat of Albert Pujols. They brought up Jordan Walker, just 20 years old, their first round pick from 2020. He was on the short list of favorites to win Rookie of the Year. They also needed a new everyday catcher, and they found a free agent they were very familiar with. A guy who spent seven years playing for their biggest rivals, Wilson Contreras. They locked him in for five years, $87.5 million. As much as St. Louis loves Yadier Molina, and putting aside all the intangibles he brought to the team with his 19 years of wisdom, Contreras was only 30 years old and a very good offensive and defensive catcher. This offense was third best in the National League in 2022, and they looked to have done enough to be in the top tier once again. After all, this team was swimming in good young talent. In the outfield, Lars Nootbaar had a very good first full season. Tyler O'Neill was a beast in 2021, and the team was still great offensively without his help in 2022. Nolan Gorman, Dylan Carlson, Brendan Donovan, Alec Burleson, Juan Yepes, all these guys were 25 or under and just coming into their own. Then you had the veterans, Nolan Arenado, who finished third for MVP playing third, and Paul Goldschmidt, who actually took home the hardware playing first. Even after losing Quintana, their starting staff was set up for a good season, bringing back everyone else they had last year, including their other big arm that was picked up midseason, Jordan Montgomery. They were also hoping to get full seasons out of Steven Matz and Jack Flaherty. They combined for only 18 starts in 2022, and they were below average when they were actually on the mound. This staff had a 379 ERA in 2022. That was top four in the National League. Okay, the season starts, they're hosting the Blue Jays, and right away, you get your first bad omen. They had a 9-8 lead in the ninth. They called on Ryan Helsley to close it out. He had a 125 ERA last year, was named to the All-Star team, finished 12 for Cy Young, and in his first save off, he blows it. The Cardinals lose their first game in heartbreaking fashion. They had a tough schedule to start. They played three playoff teams right out the gate, hosting the Blue Jays in this series, then welcoming in the Braves and hitting the road to play the Brewers. They only won three of those first nine games. Slow starts are nothing new. A lot of good teams have it. And in a 162 game season, you can afford it. But they just kept losing series after series. Dropped two out of three against Arizona. Dropped two out of three in Seattle. Dropped three of four in San Francisco. And then it got really ugly. They go to Dodger Stadium and get swept. Then come home to face the Angels, got swept there too. And then they welcome in the Tigers. They lose the first one, and in game two, they have a one run lead going to the seventh. Chris Stratton is pitching, and he gives up a single to Spencer Torkelson to tie it. Giovanni Gallegos gives up a ground rule double to Akil Badu. The Cardinals still have a shot to get their ghost runner in, but Alec Burleson smashes this ball to first, and Torkelson makes this amazing play to nail Arenado at third. The Cards lose their eighth straight game, and they find themselves 10 and 24. They're the worst team in the National League, already 10 games out of first place, and people start to get nervous. But then, they started to recover. They won seven of the next eight, capping that run with an 18-1 drubbing of the Brewers, and they went on a run that saw them win 14 of 20. That left them just six games under 500 and four games out of first place. That moment of time on May 27th, a day where Jack Flaherty went seven innings of one run ball, a game they squeaked out over the Guardians in extra innings. That was the most optimistic the Cardinals felt since opening day. Well, it was all downhill from there. If you want to point to a game that crushed the Cardinals' spirits, it was the very next night, May 28th in Cleveland. Jordan Montgomery set up the Cardinals to win, and the bullpen gave a one-run lead to Helsley in the ninth. 
He walked two batters, but also got two outs. But up came Guardians MVP Jose Ramirez, and one pitch turned a win into a loss. This double driving in the tying and winning runs. They got shut out against the Royals the next night, went to Pittsburgh and got swept, went to Texas and lost two out of three, went back home for the Reds and dropped two of three. Then the Giants came in and won the first two, but found themselves down two runs in the ninth. With two outs, Gallegos was facing Mike Yastrzemski, and with one swing of the bat, the game was tied. Steven Matz gave up three in the tenth, and that sealed the sweep. This was their fifth straight loss, and it was significant for another reason. It looked dire when they were 10 and 24. They recovered from there, but after that crushing loss to the Giants, they were 27 and 42, 15 games under 500, even lower than their lowest point. On July 3rd, they went to Miami and blew a 4-2 lead in the seventh. Miles Michaelis putting two on, Andre Pallante unable to strand them, and the Cards lost another heartbreaker by one run. This loss dropped them 10 and a half games out of first place, and they would never see that deficit drop to single digits for the rest of the season. After the All-Star break, they won six in a row and pulled just nine games under 500, but they couldn't sustain that, and the front office pulled the plug at the trade deadline. Jordan Hicks was having, arguably, his best year out of the bullpen, a 367 ERA in 40 games, and he was sent to the Blue Jays. Paul DeYoung and Henesis Cabrera joined him in Toronto shortly after. Jordan Montgomery was very solid, a 342 ERA and 21 starts, but his contract was coming due and they sent him to Texas. Then there was Jack Flaherty, once such a promising piece for the Cardinals' future, but his contract was expiring. His ERA stood at 443 after 20 starts, and the Orioles took him off their hands. After this, they were playing out the stretch, and over the last two months, they played seven games under 500, winning their last two games, but still finishing 71 and 91, 20 games under, the first time they lost 90 games since 1990. In fact, over the last 100 years, they only did this three other times, 1990, 1978, and 1976. So, what happened? Looking at some basic trends, a couple things stand out. In 2022, they were 26 and 17 in one-run games. In 2023, they flipped that over, 17 and 26. Sometimes, that implies a team is actually better than their record, like the Padres, but that wasn't the case here. Look at this stat, blown leads. In 2022, they blew 26, and in 2023, they blew 41. They were also resilient in 2022, 40 comeback wins. That was down to 28 in 2023. I mentioned their top three offense last year, 772 runs total. That's 4.8 runs per game. That went down to 719 runs in 2023, 4.4 runs per game. It doesn't seem like much, but that number three offense was now number 10. Their pitching was a similar story. In 2022, a 379 ERA was good for fourth place in the National League. That ballooned exactly a full run in 2023. That was also fourth in the National League, just fourth worst. Let's take a look at who was responsible for that downfall. Last year, their best pitcher was Miles Michaelis. 32 starts, 202 innings, 329 ERA. This year, he put in almost the same amount of work, 201 innings, but that ERA spiked by a run and a half. At age 40, Adam Wainwright was rock solid in 2022. 32 starts, 191 innings, 371 ERA. What a difference a year makes. He almost cut his innings in half, but that ERA nearly doubled, all the way up to 740. Those were the glaring examples, but there weren't too many bright spots. Jordan Montgomery had 21 starts in a 342 ERA in half a season before getting traded, and Steven Matz held his ERA under four, but he only got the start in 17 games. Jack Flaherty also continued to live up to the hype, a 4.43 ERA and 20 starts before going to the Orioles. And once he got there, he was a complete disaster. When you look at the starting pitching as a whole, they had a 3.92 ERA in 2022. That wasn't great, only ninth place in the National League, but that was well over a run better than 2023, posting a 5.08 ERA and finishing third to last. It makes you think, maybe they really did miss Yadier Molina. The bullpen isn't off the hook either, hence all those blown leads. Ryan Helsley was still good, but not automatic like he was in 2022. His ERA doubled from 125 to 245, battling some injuries and putting in just about half the innings he put in last year. Andre Pallante was a nice surprise last year. This year, his ERA jumped by well over a run and a half. Jake Woodford had a 2.23 ERA last year. That went up by exactly four runs. Giovanni Gallegos also saw his ERA spike by almost a run and a half. Drew Verhagen was one of the few good surprises this year. Well, him and Jordan Hicks, but he was gone at the deadline. That 361 bullpen ERA in 2022 was fourth in the league, and they landed at 447 this year, third to last. The offense isn't off the hook either. That doesn't apply to their new catcher, Wilson Contreras. 
he was their best offensive player, 20 home runs and an 826 OPS. That's surprising considering who's on the corners. And on the surface, those guys were pretty good. Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado put in full seasons. Goldie hitting 25 homers and 80 RBI, 810 OPS. Arenado going 26, 93, and 774. Those are solid, but nowhere near their normal production. Jordan Walker was hitting 274 with a 718 OPS when the Cardinals sent him down, missing five weeks before coming back in June. Kind of a strange send down for a guy that was actually producing. He wasn't rookie of the year level, but he still played 117 games, hit 276, and had a 787 OPS. He had just about the same numbers as Lars Newtbar, 117 games in a very solid season. Alec Burleson and Luke and Baker tried to fill a pool shoes in the DH role, but they combined for 10 home runs and neither had an OPS that can crack 700. On the bright side, Nolan Gorman played in 30 more games and he flourished, almost doubling his home run total, raising his OPS from 721 to 805. They scored 53 fewer runs, but only saw their team OPS drop 3 points. That was good for 6th place in the league. Also, their batting average only dropped 2 points. That was good for 7th. Even without Pujols, they out-homered the 2022 team 209-197, to and they were top 5 when it came to the long ball. So, why couldn't they translate that into more runs? This might explain it. They were third to last in the league with runners in scoring position, hitting just 247. Only the Mets and Padres were worse. Last year, they were fifth place and hit 264. It doesn't seem like a big difference, but every run counts. And you saw their record flip over in one run games, from nine games over 500 to nine games under 500. They were also fourth to last in the major leagues in the clutch stat, measuring how well players do in high leverage situations. All right, where do the Cardinals go from here? Adam Wainwright retired, and so far in the offseason, they're trying to fix their pitching staff. They signed Sonny Gray, Kyle Gibson, and Lance Lynn. I don't know if these are the right guys for the job, but it is the job that they need to address. Despite their shortcomings this year, they have a lot of promise on offense, and those guys aren't even in their prime yet. Plus, they should still have some good years left in Goldschmidt and Arenado. They also traded away some of their best bullpen pieces, so we'll see what their plan is there. I fully expect the Cardinals to be better next year. That's a low bar, I know. And with the Brewers talking about trading anyone on their roster, they might be exposed. But the Cubs are on the rise, so are the Reds. The Pirates are getting better, so they're going to have to bring it if they want to sit on top of the NL Central once again. Let me know what you think about this year's Cardinals. What went wrong? What you agree with? What you disagree with? And what other points you want to add to this story? Sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you're new here and want to see more content like this, please give me a sub. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.